Hey everyone, over here with a real 427 Cobra behind me. Uh, this thing is pretty crazy. We're gonna go over the whole deal. My dad actually got it in to do some headers on it. So he's done another car that was what, a 289 car? Yeah, 289. So a 289 car, he did the headers on it. It was a little bit different deal where they kind of come together and then builds the exhaust out. But on a 427 car, it's a full header to a collector side pipe and he's gonna have to redo all the headers because when you get these things, they're kind of rough, right? I yes. mean, the, the factory headers, they're built in whatever, yeah, there's some 60. Pipes back there you can go see right there. Yeah, so these things aren't, these ones actually are in better shape than the yeah. other ones you got, but these actually aren't too terrible, but they actually had some, was one of these ones with the hole on it, where they kind of patched it, if you guys can see that. So you've met a guy, his name's Freddy, that restores these. And yeah, he's out of Howard up here in Colorado and stuff right there, so he restores these from people all over the country. He's been around them since he was a kid. He was talking about and taking pictures and everything when they were out racing. So mm -hmm. he helps restore them. Then he talked to you what, uh, that was done like five years ago. So uh, yeah, five years ago I did the, this was my first project, I guess, with Freddie. When I first met the guy, I could bend him a, a roll bar for one of these things. And he's telling me about its original Cobra, which I don't know anything about the Cobras as far as how they stand, what they build, what they look like. Or somebody brought me the roll bar, I bent him one, it worked out as a duplicate. He put it in another Cobra that he was working with at the time. And he said, well, what about an exhaust pipe? How do you feel about that? I said, sure, bring me that stuff. He brought me this side pipe. It had some dings in it, which I was told, you can see some prior repairs that somebody else had done. I kind of cleaned them up, metal finished them because they were pretty rough. Uh, this here had some dings in it, I had to do some rods kind of like they do hail damage repair work them down in here heat them work it brought it up file it all smooth got it back to uh these pipes are super thin too yes this is probably uh about 40 thousandths and stuff it's it's pretty you it's pretty actually it right i put right a, I have to put a mic on they're pretty they're pretty thin they're thin so they don't they don't hold up real well but i mean these cars have been around a long time so probably pretty decent for what they were but yeah, if you look at the time what they did, because this one here has been raced. I don't know the whole history of the car yet. I haven't got that far into it with Freddie telling me all the particulars on this car, but it does have a lot of history, I guess, as far as racing, been raced. Once that came about, that's when, how I got into the 289 was brought up, because he'd seen my Lambo at the time, the exhaust I built on it. One thing leads to another. That's why I tell people, don't ever count out what you think you might be doing in life. Because who would have guessed I'd ever be working on a... You never thought you'd add one of these in your shop. Yeah, there's a man out in Lake Havasu that he does all the body work. The body on this thing is it's, incredible. It's, it's beautiful work. Like this right here, just a piece of it's art. It's super crazy. Just to, just to see the body, the stuff that's done on them. From even back in the day, what, what these cars look like is pretty phenomenal with what they worked with. And you got to remember, that was all hand tools. Everything's done by hand. It's not go get something to stamp out a mold. This is all hand formed, hand rolled. It's pretty thin material. It's, yeah, it's not. It's 40 thousandths. 40 thousandths aluminum is what the whole body is. But, and it's a bunch of little pieces. What we kind of realized when looking yes. at this is it's built out of a bunch of little pieces to form it all. But then you were saying that the body guy does like uh, gas welding to work all yeah, the. Yeah, it's all gas welded. Well, hopefully, one of these times I want to go out to a shop out in Havasu and have this man uh, teach me. I'd put his name out there, but I haven't got permission to put it out there yet so hopefully it's down the road he's very well known in the industry uh, the work that he does is phenomenal I've seen some of his other work the last car I did came to me all painted this customer that actually owns the car wanted all this work done before the paint got in because he was afraid we'd chip the paint and some of the stuff which that's that's doesn't, fine doesn't hurt our feelings no it's their <laughs> their prerogative it's their stuff it's their deal so that's how I got the car. It's raw. I'm glad it did because I really got to see the the, the work is just, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, some of the cool things that if you guys can see it, there's a seam in here right there. You guys can kind of see the seam that runs along the body. And so this is an outer piece we figured. And then so top, part of the top of the fender is a piece. And then even coming up in here, these are all separate pieces as well that have been worked and built. Uh, you guys can kind of see like, here's a piece, piece, piece. These are all pieces, but then it's been all 
then they weld it in and smooth it in and then on the out. I mean, it's kind of cleaned up in here. You can kind of see some of the seams. Well, he said this is pretty much the way it works. Once they gas weld it, it comes in like this. So you get full penetration with it and then you hammer and dollies it and it finishes bringing this back out. This hasn't been ground or nothing. This is pretty much just hammer worked and then filed and cleaned. And then the outside, on the outside of it side sanded. With the DA, yep, where they go over it and work it. You guys can see like kind of right there. It's, it's really neat to see how many little pieces go into this car. It's a ton of small little pieces. And then the headers are a whole different thing too with the ports. So each one's its own separate port. So you cut these out on the a water jet that we had, what, probably five years ago. Five years ago. So the, he knew this project was coming, cut the ports to match what was on those pipes over there. And then now he's starting to work these in here, as you guys saw on the header video on the uh, burnout truck, just starting with little pieces, starts building out, built him a piece here. Then this one, now he's working out, and then the other side too. So these cars have some difficulties, right, with building them around the foot boxes. You had to deal with that last time. Yeah, it gets really tight and stuff, because the foot box is all fiberglass and it's gel coated and stuff, so they obviously don't like the heat very well. And it breaks them down. These ones here have been all redone as well as the last car. So that's what we're, uh, the plan is once we get done with this, he'll send them off to have these here uh, coated inside and out. So it'll help pull some of the heat out of them. Uh, and then we'll probably end up having to still put a small piece of wrap in here just to try to protect the, the foot box. The driver's side is gonna be a booger on this. I'm trying to do what I can to gain room. This here, I gained a little room. I'm not able to do much because obviously it's such a tight fitting area and stuff because just this is the way they put the starter up in here so you still got to keep this access like so wasn't i was going to drop the pipe but then you got to come back up soon as you do that it stops the starter so everything always leads to why you can why you can't do this this and that so this one i had to start so here we just trying to gain what we can the driver's side like i said that's going to be this is that fixed pretty, position that it's not going to change right this here i have to match i have to come back to this there's no doubt so i, I did what i did is i put the original header in, all in here assembled you guys can it. see it on the passenger side it's kind of how we did it so you guys can see on this one the original header is still in the car and he's built the mount to hold the pipe out here but this side has its own things you kind of got to deal with yeah this one here out he's Freddie's bringing me the steering, so it's gonna run down through the side. So I gotta have the critical components that I gotta make sure I still uh, gain the clearance for, which this will be a steering down through the side here. Try to gain some more room with the foot box, which this is very, this very super, tight. super tight. So if I can get it, you guys can see right there, it's extremely tight to the foot box because the foot box is bigger on this side because of the pedals, the steering column and everything. And then it comes out and he runs down the side of the car right here but it is an extremely, but this side is extremely tight for what he's having to build around. As you guys can see, like that's probably not gonna be the funnest pipe for him to build that one back up in there. But you can see it has a big hole in it as well. So uh, just trying to get these things back to somewhat original, I guess, right? Yeah, like they've, they're accepting with going with the stainless because obviously it's a little better component than what they had back in the day and stuff are probably to work with. Even the bins are different sizes, like you just yeah. don't see bins of those radiuses or anything really anymore either. Right, I was trying to get pipes that kind of match the bin to this. What I found, people had them discontinued, they weren't making them. So instead of trying to, which this isn't so critical is what I was told as, as far as trying to match this because everything was all different, depending on what team had them, what, who was racing, Each who was building them. Each car even had like a different set of headers on them. And yeah, they, everything was kind of had some differences to them. I'm not there again, I'm not real up on the differences in the Cobra, so I can't really answer those questions. But I'm learning as, as I've been around Freddie with learning some of this stuff, it's pretty fascinating, the history, the stuff that comes with this. Before when somebody would have brought me one of these things, I wouldn't have been able to tell you if this was a kit car, if it was a real car. Just from the looks of it, out of you just don't know like no i would have told them they were crazy i mean they're pretty <laughs> simply built it's just this big like four inch tube down the center of them yeah the and like even this is just some tubes but yep. then you go to square tubing so it's nothing real crazy for a low production not a bunch of stamping hand built car they're not a lot of i mean what my dad was even talking about is like on these brackets you can see where they're torch cut they have the lasers which none of that's kind of been even ground or anything it's all it's all still kind of torch cut, so there's a lot of, it's just not as 
factory, I guess. I mean, there's a, it's still a lot of well, hand-built stuff. What you see is now where we have automated machines. Granted, they had machines back in then, but it wasn't as available. It wasn't Especially as, on a as part that wasn't as mass-produced right. as these are. Which So neither one of us really know a lot of the history on Cobras. Uh, we've learned a little bit. You've talked to Freddie quite a bit. He knows a ton of uh, history on it, but it's kind of interesting to see what they were. Uh, that's what we were even talking about. I assume that like kit cars are like a fiberglass body. This one is a true aluminum body. So right. we'll have to do some, re I'm not even sure you guys might know. I'm guessing that that's probably one of the main things is what the body's made out of. I don't even know if they make a reproduction like yeah, aluminum. Yeah, there is. There's a company that's actually even producing that's doing aluminum. aluminum bodies. So see, even at that, then it's not even There was some of them that was actually guaranteed. sold at Barrett Jackson this January. That was, company, it does make the, the bodies in aluminum. I think, well, they had that copper one. I'm assuming that was a copper body. Oh, that so that'd really, be crazy. Especially if there's it anything near this type of a... You well, know, it was the, polished. It was a copper one. I'm, ass, I'm assuming that was a true <laughs> copper. That's pretty neat, too. But just, and that's what, it's all history-based. Their cars are pretty simple. They're not, but they're just so rare. I guess that's what makes them so valuable and... We were talking like this, like this doesn't exist, and this doesn't exist on the 289 car. Right. I, I so, got a poster I can show you. Yeah, he has a poster of the one that he actually finished. We'll show you guys, and then also the body. When you start looking at them, these have a lot more like a wide body look to them too. It's it's pretty neat seeing all the different body flares. So the 427 cars are quite a bit different than the 289 cars. Here's the. You can see it. So this is the car that he did the exhaust on. He just. Had a little exhaust tip come out here out the back. It actually has like cast manifolds that go to one and then it's two to one and then the exhaust goes out the back. But this is the car that you did. How, how long ago was this? Uh, this has been two years ago now. And this one showed up on a rack just like this one, but it was painted a little bit further. I think it had like the heater box in it and stuff. A few, few more things in it to finish it. But uh, otherwise that's the car as you guys can see. It's a little bit flatter on the sides, doesn't have the vents, doesn't have the lower little vent. Um, and the, the flares on the, the flare on the rear quarter from that car to this car. <laughs> it's so crazy that this it has such a huge flare on the back of this one, which is really neat. But that kind of shows you guys how they end up when they just fully restore them. That one's been done for a few years now, and now it's time for this one to get finished. I'm sure you guys will want to see some more of this car, so as you get done some more on it we'll we'll do yeah. probably an update hopefully hopefully we'll be able to see this thing done too it would be really yeah, cool keep, keep in touch with freddie that's why we've already discussed that there might be some other stuff i end up helping him doing some stuff on the car as time progresses and stuff so we'll see how that all works out kind of with freddie's schedule with mine what he's needing well like we said like you worked on the header or the collector deal like five years ago so they're not they're not an extremely fast built car. As they get no. restored, it's a very slow, they go to the people that, that need to do them. And I can't imagine like finding parts or whatever. I would assume you got to try to find these cars pretty complete, but. Yeah, and then as they got to look for something that's period correct or something that was a. That went with it or. Thing that's, I know, I think on the last one, it was, I built some, uh, well, actually it might be for this car actually. They're on the brakes and there are quick disconnects when they raced them and they come in and it had some spring loaded deal so they'd pop it, pull them up and pull the brake pads out. I made two sets of those. They brought me all the components. I had to weld them together, but that to was, a, a, yeah, so it was back to. So it's as far as that, that you have to get to where you make things to make it right. complete. And that was their quick, what they call a quick disconnect to change the brake pads back in the day. So pull the spring, pop them out, pop new ones pop in, them in, thing and it's crazy. they're back out. So it's. When you look at it, it's kind of crude what you're thinking, what <laughs> yeah. people are doing. But, but then you have to remember that the cars were built so long ago, and then for what yeah. it was, it was way ahead of its time and, yes, and the racing and everything. It, they're just so simple, but yet so rare and different, too, which is what makes them really cool. Not really seeing them and then seeing... We, we've been wanting to... I guess there's a place here in Colorado that has more history things about it and go check yeah, it out. I believe it's up in... Older, I think Freddie yeah said. so we've been meaning to go like see that so we can just kind of learn more about it. just like going through the Corvette Museum we learned a bunch about just Corvettes that you don't even know about so something that's different on this car is the flanges are like this so he's actually came up with a whole system to make a pipe kind of fit it fits this 
So this is not anything you've had to deal with really on any other set of headers, but this engine has such yeah. different ports. Yeah, I did on my LS because it was a it, D port. It has the D port. So you had to flatten the bottom of it. Yes, which was much easier. <laughs> this one here, obviously, it doesn't fit as well. So when you have this up in the car, it actually sets like this. The ones up in the car, I've, I've located a line right here on the center. So then when you're trying to come out with your direction, granted, it's a straight piece of pipe. It doesn't go anywhere. But the other ones are bins. comes right out. So I put it up right beside where I'm going to put it. I put my mark on here. I can carry it to my pipe. Say it was on this one. Then I, I carry it over to my, my press. I made this little deal right here. So I, I, it fits inside the round piece. So you can start. It turns here. But then I can put a flat under here and here. And I put my line where it's straight up. Because I know this is going to be a flat. Press it down. Press it starts getting it pretty close. Then I can come over here because it's still all distorted. I can put it in here. Then I can hammer form and mold this. So once you kind of have it close, you can still change your direction by a little bit. Like I'd have to pound it down here if I wanted to rotate this a little bit. Work it here. Work the same thing down on this side. And then that way you're able to rotate this a little bit. But you got to be pretty close with where it's at. I know this looks pretty crude for where you're looking at it. But you got to start. This is where you start and you get it in here. And then once you get it... Right, I'll tack it on the outside, start building this here. I'll start hammer forming all this out and build it to where it'll fit nice and tight. It'll come out here, get a nice transition. Then I'll weld the inside and I'll weld the outside. So it'll be a nice, nice clean fit. But there's no way you're gonna gain this all out and stuff. Not, not hammer forming in my garage anyway. If I had a press where I could do this stuff, I think it was whenever I did the Lambo stuff and I had to make the flares, uh, I machined a, a piece out and I could put it up in the in my press and I could press it down but it was just a round transition that made it into a cone which uses a donuts which is like a a slip clamping portion like they, you'll see on some of the newer exhaust systems and stuff kind of like the Lambo had and stuff here we don't have that option so it's got to be pretty close to this if I had the other piece but some of these are, are tight 90s there's no way you're going to put that into a jig and, and form it so therefore it all falls back into hammer form it once I get this out like I said tack it put it in a vise, hammer form it, bring this all out, weld it. So a bunch it. of time spent just, just in getting out of the head. Yes, just to, just to even get started. As you can see some of the ones up in the car. You guys can see he's already started working on some of these, but there is some of that gap, but he's just getting the pipe to where it's built and starting to work its way out. And then he'll go back and have to form all of that. And that's where you can see on these, they didn't weld the outside, they just put little tacks, but then they, you're thinking they had some sort of a press deal that had to go in there? Well, I'm thinking they hammer formed it. Like, I'll do the same thing. You take a bar, a real you rod. Mark it down in there? Yep. You just got to sit here and you got you to gotta beat the daylight. This is 40000 This stuff would have moved pretty easy. This stuff's, this stuff's be... a little 65000 and it's stainless. This is a mild steel. Totally different. It's still doable. It's just going to be some. You can see where they took all that to work it out. And work it into that same yep. same port. You had to start with a round and end up with a <laughs> rectangle. Work it into the into the transition. It's like I tell everybody, if it's already been done once, it can be done again. You're just kind of reversing what they had to have done back then to yes. try to mimic what they have here. As you guys can see under the car here too, the frames are pretty simple on these. They're just like a round tube with round tube braces that come across. But just a few of them across the whole thing. Uh, on the old car that he had, you actually looked at this tube and it wasn't even perfectly straight, like where they can kind of pull in and move a little bit. I guess uh, they were talking about too, is they'll put sleeves in here to strengthen them up, right? Yeah, they'll put them down the... They'll kind of slide sleeves down to help strengthen some of these up. These look really straight. This car looks super straight on the on the frame, but uh, I think that it was pretty much the same, right? The 289 car looked similar. I think this cross braces might've been a little yeah, different. I can't really remember. This is three inch diameter. The or this one is here three. is a four inch. Or, oh, okay. So the 289 car is a three inch pipe and then these are four. So you can see all the basic brackets though, come up, hold the body right here, mounts to that and everything, but really real simple frame. And then they just build these little carts to move them around on while they're being built. And comes over, hooks to everything. And then the fiberglass box is like what he was talking about there. Well, that's a quick little look at the frame too. Cool little video for you. Thought I'd show you something pretty rare that we're getting to see and uh, share with you guys because definitely not every day that you'll see one of these cars or if ever. I don't think I've ever seen a real one possibly until that other one came in and now we get to see this 427 car. 
but we will keep you guys up to date on the header build, show you kind of when it's done and the completed project. But until next time, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.